Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is uh, the last day of the Dirty Day Leco Challenge for April. I uh, hope everyone's enjoying th these streams. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, come to Discord, come to the Twitch, uh, do whatever you will, and then let's look at the last form. Uh, cool. Check if a string is a valid uh, sequence from root to leave path in binary tree. Uh, given a binary tree where each path going from the root to any leaf forms a valid sequence, check if a given string is a valid sequence in a binary tree. Uh, we get the given string from the concatenation from an array of integers R and the concatenation of all values of the nodes in a path in a sequence of, of given binary tree. Okay, let's see. Uh, what does this mean? Oh, is this just, uh, oh, that's just the representation of the node in the test case you're actually given the node, okay. Um, okay. Um, hmm, let's think about it a little bit. Um, does it have to go through the root? I guess that's the first thing I need to check. Do you remember? Do I need to check? in such a binary okay so i think one thing that i would say and that's actually a kind of uh, a thing that sometimes the uh, the problem will try to trick you on is they give you an example and then that example is or those examples are you know they're, they're representative but they're missing a little thing which is what i just said which is uh, whether it needs to go um and wait uh, which has to go through the root. I think it's a little bit ambiguous. And in an interview, I might actually double check and ask me because it's a very easy question. I'm like, hey, uh, do we have to go through the root? Um, was this each path uh, the form right through in? Maybe you have to go through the root. Okay, Let, let's try that. And if that's an edge case or trick case, know that in an interview, uh, we would definitely ask for that and then we'll check either case. Uh, but assuming that we have to go through the, uh, the route, uh, this becomes a much easier problem because we just have to uh, do it recursively. Uh, because, well, is this true? Oh, actually, give me a second to think about it. Okay, so I actually maybe misunderstood it a little bit uh, in the sense that um, Wait, let, let me double read this a little bit. Um, well, one is noticing that you can actually, because um, uh, one assumption that I had was that it was maybe like a try where you have zero and ones, but actually uh, in this first example, you can notice that uh, zeros could be both uh, child or children of this one. So it, it's not true that it's a zero and one because that would make things a little bit easier. Uh, and it seems like the other valid sequences I'm um, not sure. We get to okay. So oh, so mm. okay. So it has to go from the root because it's a valid sequence. We get the given string from concatenation of an array of integers. R. Like, okay. Um. So these are other valid sequences, but not the one that we first are. I think that was the, a little bit confusing for me, but uh, that's fine. Uh, zero, zero, 001 doesn't exist, okay. Um, so one, one is a sequence, but it's not a valid sequence because it doesn't go all the way to, uh, to the leaf. Okay, so these are kind of good things to kind of test about. Uh, given that n is 5,000, uh, you can actually do a n square algorithm, but it's a little bit, um, but let's, before we do that, um, Let's see if we can think about uh, better ways about it. And I do have a little bit of a worry. Um, uh, oh, and it's not just binary. Wait, in a binary? Oh, the tree is binary, but the numbers are not necessarily binary. Okay. Uh, that's kind of a little bit confusing because I'm, now I'm looking at... Um, uh, uh, the inputs and I was like from zero to nine, huh? What does that mean, right? Um, also, they don't tell you the length of the or the size of the tree, which maybe is okay. Um, yeah, so I think the only thing that I would think about, right, is um, it's just the worst case, um, and because you can have 
like the worst case is the entire tree is from is just like the same number and your entire R is the same number, right? Um, but in that case, um, and in that case, you would have two to the n type, because uh, um, you would have to check every path. And I guess the worst case is technically, if all these are zeros except for like have a one at the end, and if your R's are all zero, uh, your brute force algorithm uh, might um, might go for all of them. But if you do your depth first search correctly, um, and you maintain your states correctly, you will only look at every node uh, at most once uh, by itself, checking it against an array, array index. Uh, so I think this is actually pretty straightforward. Then uh, I think that we uh, we spent some time <laughs> on this chat just trying to make sure that uh, all the edge cases are what we read it is. Um, so, so yeah, so I think without that, now we can just do a, essentially a, a little, I wouldn't say brute force, but a depth first search uh, one item on the way at a time and one item on the on the on the tree at a time and uh, it's very similar to uh, the problems that we have done before and also for, as a result um, when we talk about interviews th this is why um, you know this is why trees uh, come up a lot on interviews so definitely practice problems like this uh, because it has a very recursive structure and it allows you to analyze things in a in a very straightforward way um, in theory, <laughs> uh, and yeah, okay. Let, let's let's get started then. Um, and now, no, knowing our actual thing, because my only other thought was that if a path does not have to go through the root, uh, then then um, then uh, then you know this problem just becomes more complicated as all. Well. But uh, okay, let's go. Uh, and now, in this case, we actually just call. Let's just name visit uh, and a note, uh, and actually let's just also pass in the index of the, uh, and this is the index of the array that we're um, going through. Um, okay, and now uh, let's say if index is equal to length, uh, well let's cache n. n is equal to length of array. Uh, if index is equal to n, that means we're done. Uh, well, right, so if node is true, or uh, oops, if node is not none, uh, well, let's just go the other way. If node is none, then we return true. Uh, else we return false because we went through the array, but we're not at the leaf node, right? Um, may, may have to double check a little bit on the off by one. No, that should be okay. Um, and then now um, we just have to, uh, well, we actually could probably, I mean, I, I'm going to write this out, but you can actually do it in one liner now. Uh, but if uh, if node is equal to uh, if node dot value is equal to the array of this index, uh, return true. Uh, or, um, well, sorry, that's that's not true. In this case, we want to visit uh, return visit of um, node dot left uh, index plus one, or visit uh, dot right index plus one. So we can actually rename this. Like, mm, can can go to leaf. I don't know. Okay, let's just keep this name for now. Um, otherwise, return false, right? Uh, because if it's not equal, then you just don't go. Uh, so that's why I was saying that you can actually do this in the one liner. Uh, and uh, but I just wanted to be a little bit illustrative of uh, the conditionals that got us there. Um, but yeah, and then now we just have to return visit uh, root and starting from zero, and that's kind of how we get started. This is. Um, Oops. Uh, oh, I forgot to check for node is none. Uh, if node is none, uh, and index is not at the end, then we just return false because that means that um, you got to a leaf, but array is not over. Um, let's run the code while I copy and paste some things back uh, into the thing. Um, I think both of the last two are none, and and then let's test some uh, edge cases around. Uh, 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 how many is n? N has to be at least one element. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that the, so. Yeah, whatever doesn't really matter. Well, doesn't matter as long as you have the right syntax. Um, okay, 
uh, let's get so one thing I would also uh, say especially for competitive programmers uh, because at least for me, uh, because the result here is boolean, like true or false, try to think of more cases that you can maybe generate. Because even if um, if it matches all your example cases, like sometimes you just get lucky and get, you know, like because half. To, I mean, roughly speaking, I know that this is not a uh, a uniform distribution of probability per se, um, but you know, uh, sometimes uh, you know, even if you just say you know without knowing anything, that half half the time it returns one value, uh, you may get it wrong by accident as a result. Um, okay, I think I'm relatively confident about this, so let's uh, hit submit, unless I miss an edge case. Um, ooh, oops, did I miss an edge case? Uh, output is true expected force. I, should, I do also expect this to be false, so... So I test this, I, I thought I tested this here with this answer, but... Um, maybe I'm off by one somewhere. Hmm. Uh, okay. I think maybe I misunderstood. Okay. I think I see why that's the case, uh, which is that my right subtree is node. Uh, and I think maybe I just misunderstand. Uh, okay. So we have to change the base case a little bit. I think I misunderstood, uh, the condition of this problem a little bit. Um, and what and what I mean is that let's see if this visualizes. Uh, so in this case, I I consider eight uh, going to um, to um, what you might call it uh, to the right side uh, true, and that's why it returns true. Um, but it it seems like it it has to be to a specific uh, leaf. In this case, I did make a mistake. Um, a leaf in this case is. Um, I believe it in this case requires both child children to be none and not just one child to be none. Uh, so so let's let's fix that. Uh, and where, uh, hmm. and that's what I mean earlier also as well is that uh, sometimes uh, having boolean results will give you a false sense of uh, confidence. So you have to really uh, drill down and test your things. So uh, I was wrong on this one though. Uh, okay. Um, hmm. Let's think a little bit of how to fix this. Uh, hmm. I guess we have to check. T I mean, I I like the way I. Some of it is I like the way that I wrote the code now because it's beautiful. But we have to actually. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, reality is a little messy. So you have to figure out how to not do that. And the reason is because this is a really cool base case. But it doesn't matter if it's cool if it's wrong, well, right? So let's change it a little bit. Uh, so now we have to do the special logic on the last second. Not second. The last number. Um, so yeah. So now if no, that well is, uh, and we, let's focus on getting right first. And um, so um, if not none, and this, uh, then now let's return no dot left is not none or is none, and no, that right is none. Uh, I think that's really it. No, what's that? Yeah, okay. I think I was just trying to be a little bit too clever and clean with the code, but let's try again. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that was it. Uh, it is very, uh, you know, that's, this is why you do unit testing, is that it is very easy to make uh, errors as well as defining things when, uh, especially on a tree, when you're not, because uh, for me, I took a little bit of a shortcut on just like try to find a beautiful, quote unquote, beautiful base case. Um, but instead, uh, I did make a error, which is very easy to make. So definitely uh, check yourself. Uh, and, you know, if you look at the time, we spent about 15 minutes talking about this, and that included me talking through some stuff. Uh, but if you're in a real interview, you have, um, you know, at least half an hour to an hour. So definitely take the entire time to slow down and also write more test cases, uh, really define what a child is. And, you know, it's beautiful code is great, uh, but it could still be wrong. So, you you know, when your model disagrees with your uh, with reality, you know, choose reality. Don't choose your model. Uh, so definitely, like, this is obviously a little bit messier than what I had before, but it is right. So 
Uh, and what it's saying is, um, if a node is a child, and that's all this thing is, and maybe in terms of code readability, you could uh, abstract this to a way to a, a helper function, and that will allow you to not really think about it in terms of uh, the edge cases, because, well, like, it's very easy to write, write something to check with a node as a child, right? Like, is child, no, well, just return. Uh, you know, this, and then there's no way to get it wrong, I mean, not no way to get it wrong, but like it's harder to get it wrong because if your condition is like this, and you had what we had before with like, um, whatever this was, something like that, um, if node is none, return true, I think I had something like this, uh, well, none of this really specifically define a child, um, oh sorry, it's leave, my bad. I've been saying the wrong thing a little bit. So it's leave, right? So we didn't do anything to specifically check the leave condition. Um, and I think something that happens sometimes, at least for me, is that uh, in competitive programming specifically, maybe not in interviews, but in competitive programming, you try to find all these cell node base cases that makes your coding easier. Uh, and yeah, maybe most of the time you're right, uh, but you definitely still have to be careful and not get too overconfident uh, uh, because sometimes, uh, you know, it's minor things, right? Like, um, like I knew what a leaf is, and most people know what a leaf is, but sometimes you, like, convince yourself that uh, minor differences um, doesn't matter when sometimes they do. Like, having one ch uh, child is none versus both child is none. And sometimes it's worth being explicit, and, uh, and that's part of um, what makes uh, code readable, right? So, uh, so, yeah, so now we can write someone like, you know, no, this leaf, uh, also, node.while is equal to a, a index. Uh, so something like that, and then that is way clearer, right? Uh, because in this line, you're like, okay, if the, if the node index matches and it's a leaf and you don't have to worry about stuff. Um, but yeah, so overall, uh, let's, talk, uh, let's do a quick talk on complex, excuse me, complexity. Um, other than stack space, which is all of, um, of D for the depth of the tree, uh, and that's just for uh, just the, the stack size. Um, we don't really allocate any more memory uh, in terms of, uh, and, and D, the depth can be N, so depending on how you want to analyze it, it could be O of N, uh, and in terms of um, uh, one time complexity, we visit each node at most once, uh, so that's going to be O of 1 for each node, so O of N altogether. Um, yeah, and that's all I, um, yeah, for interview prompts, as I mentioned at the top of the poem, um, tree prompts are really popular, they come up all the time, uh, because recursion is really popular, and that comes up all the time, uh, so, and tree, uh, is a recursive structure, so there's a lot of easy, quote-unquote easy, uh, or easy to give interview questions, uh, relying on trees and, and recursion, so definitely something that I would practice on, um, because they come up a lot. Uh, for compare programming, you really should, you know, be good at stuff like this uh, at some point uh, because it comes up all the time as well. Uh, tree problems also for what, for probably the same reasons about recursion. They come up disproportionately almost, uh, but recursion problems as well. So, uh, so yeah, uh, that's all I have for this problem. Uh, thanks for, you know, I just want to give a quick thank you for, if you've been here for an entire month or just today, that's fine. Uh, you know, hope you enjoyed this series. Um, yeah, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. How did you do? I hope, you know, this video or these videos help. And I will see you maybe tomorrow. Bye-bye.